Reading from the Mueller report today, this is uh, page 48. The, uh, it's about WikiLeaks and their statements dissembling about the source of stolen materials. Beginning in the summer of 2016, Assange and WikiLeaks made a number of statements about Seth Rich, a former DNC staff member who was killed in July 2016. The statement about Rich falsely implied that he had been the source of the stolen DNC emails. On August 9th, 2016, Rich, the, the WikiLeaks, at WikiLeaks Twitter account posted, quote, announced WikiLeaks has decided to issue a U.S. $20,000 reward for information leading to conviction for the murder of DNC staffer Seth Rich. Likewise, on August 25th, 2016, Assange was asked in an interview, why are you so interested in Seth Rich's killer? And he responded, quote, we're very interested in anything that might be a threat to alleged WikiLeaks sources. The interviewer responded to Assange's statement by commenting, I know you don't reveal your source, but it certainly sounds like su you're suggesting a man who leaked information to WikiLeaks was then murdered. Assange replied, quote, if there's someone who's potentially connected to our publication, and that person has been murdered in suspicious circumstances, it doesn't necessarily mean the two are connected. But it is a very serious matter. That type of allegation is very serious, and it's taken very seriously by us." End quote. After the U.S. intelligence community publicly announced its assessment that Russia was behind the hacking operation, Assange continued to deny that the Clinton materials released by WikiLeaks had come from Russian hacking. According to media reports, Assange told the U.S. congressman that the D.C. hack was an inside job, and purported to have, quote, physical proof that Russians did not give materials to Assange. Item C, additional GRU cyber operations. While releasing the stolen emails and documents through DC leaks, Guccifer 2.0, and WikiLeaks, GRU officers continued to target and hack victims linked to the Democratic campaign and eventually to target entities responsible for election administration in several states. Number one, summer and fall 2016 operations targeting Democrat-linked victims. On July 27, 2016, Unit 26165, this is of the GRU, targeted email accounts connected to candidate Clinton's personal office. And there's a bunch of text here redacted by, uh, by, uh, by Bill Barr. Earlier that day, candidate Trump made public statements that included, included the following, quote, Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press, end quote. The 30,000 emails were apparently a reference to emails described in media accounts as having been stored on a personal server that candidate Clinton had used while serving as Secretary of State. Within approximately five hours of Trump's statement, GRU officers targeted, for the first time, Clinton's personal office. After candidate Trump's remarks, Unit 26165 created and sent malicious links targeting 15 emails ac email accounts at the domain redacted by Bill Barr, including an email account belonging to Clinton aide redacted by Bill Barr. The investigation did not find evidence of earlier GRU attempts to compromise accounts hosted on this domain. It's unclear how the GRU was able to identify these email accounts, which were not public. Unit 26165 officers also hacked into a DNC account hosted on a cloud computing service, redacted. On September 20th, 2016, the GRU began to generate copies of the DNC data using redacted, function designed to allow users to produce backups of databases referred to as redacted snapshots. The GRU then stole these snapshots by moving them to redacted account that they controlled. From there, the copies were moved to GRU-controlled computers. The GRU stole, stole approximately 300 gigabytes of data from the DNC cloud-based account. Number two, intrusions targeting the administration of U.S. elections. In addition to targeting individuals involved in the Clinton campaign, GRU officers also targeted individuals and entities involved in the administration of the elections. Victims included U.S. state and local entities, such as state boards of elections, secretaries of state, and county governments, as well as individuals who worked for these entities. The GRU also targeted private technology firms responsible for manufacturing and administering election-related software and hardware, such as voter registration software and electronic polling stations. The GRU continued to target these victims throughout the elections in November 2016. While the investigation identified evidence that the GRU targeted these individuals and entities, the office did not investigate further. The office did not, for instance, obtain or examine servers or other relevant items belonging to these victims. The office understands that the FBI, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and the states have separately investigated that activity. 
By at least the summer of 2016, GRU officers sought access to state and local computer networks by exploiting known software vulnerabilities on websites of state and local government entities. GRU officers, for example, targeted state and local databases of registered voters using a technique known as SQL injection, by which malicious code was sent to the state or local website in order to run commands such as exfiltrating the database contents. In one instance, in approximately June 2016, the GRU compromised the computer network of the Illinois State Board of Elections by exploiting a vulnerability in the SBOE's website. The GRU then gained access to a database containing information on millions of registered Illinois voters and extracted data related to thousands of U.S. voters before the malicious activity was identified. Page 51. Actually, well, uh, uh, GRU officers scan state and local websites for vulnerabilities. It's the Mueller report.